All right, I'm very excited to tell you about the Thor HDMI RF modulator. It will basically turn your HDMI source to a coax source and you can send it out as a QAM, ATSC, a DVB-T or an ISDB-T um, source through coax. So it enables you to change that uh, HDMI stuff and if you want to run it to multiple TV screens uh, m most North American TVs have ATSC and Qualm Clear tuners built into them. It will support 10, uh, 720p, 1080i, 1080p, 60, uh, up to 60 frames per second. It's from Thor Broadcast. You can get that's their website there. You go to thorbroadcast.com and take a look at this thing. Kind of gives you the diagram of what happens here. Where you can, uh, uh, what I've done is been with my uh, modulators before is I combined it with my over-the-air antenna and then I had my own uh, personal channel which would be a satellite receiver or any source that I would want to run through this thing and you configure it with a uh, with a M MMS connection one of these uh, computer network connections just one of these standard connections you plug into your router at home or at your office or whatever and uh, it also has an HDMI output so the HDMI will give you a a clear and um, probably accurate ad hoc to see like uh, much closer. Sometimes with these modulators, it might be a second or two delay because it's digital and it's digitizing. And you just send it out through a splitter to multiple TVs, or plug it into a, an existing cable line or antenna line that you already have. So, and she looks infatuated with her ATSC modulator. Wouldn't you be that infatuated if you had an ATSC modulator? Of course you would. So let's open her up. Of course, it's going to have the manual. Go through, go, I'll go through the, most of this stuff with you. Here's the modulator itself. And there's not a whole lot to it. It's got some HDMI cables. These things always have these little pads to them for connecting an HDMI source and power supply. So it's not a whole lot to it. It's just simply your modulator. It does have a rack rack screws so you can put it on a rack or do what you need to do and here's the size of my hand it is not huge it's just basically like a satellite receiver uh, so you'll have your connections here you'll have your uh, HDMI loop out and your HDMI your uh, LAN connection and your power supply it even has a ground so if you're leaving this on all the time that's great so you can run it to uh, a ground just you know keeps the static electricity away from it it has a loop out so you can plug your RF, in, RF out for where you're going to send it and also an RF in so if you're combining it with an antenna or another source. Here's the bottom and the top just has uh, that and in the front you'll have the uh, power lock line and the encoding and it gives you a little bit of control from the front but for the most part to get this thing configured you want to hook it up to your computer network via a LAN connection, one of these connections right here looks like a you know and just stick that in there and you'll uh, config you'll be able to configure it it says to do a 192.1.168.10 uh, port 10 all right so here I got it going here now the first thing I noticed once I got it going is it booted up into channel 2 on its default setting so it used what would be the Qualm setting, so I had to connect it via the cable port uh, with the coax. I can switch it over to air, but just if you want to use this for just right out of the box, it'll go to default, it'll go to channel 2, and it'll say that it's DTV cable. And let me just go out from the HDMI source here, and it's actually doing 1080i now as to match this resolution. So I just have, for the source, I'm just running an Edison satellite receiver, and I'm just running like uh, some of my videos that I've rendered <laughs> on uh, off of a USB stick. So this thing's playing the video and running it out of the HDMI cable over to the Thor broadcast box, and it also does a loop out uh, HDMI loop out to the TV, and I got this connected to the cable now. To connect it, uh, to get the set, change around the settings, the first thing I noticed, I wasn't getting audio 
So I had this uh, connected up to a router. Connected up to a router that I don't even have, I'm not even using, but I just got this old router here. And then I plugged the two cables into each other just so I can type in the web address, which is the... So the default address usually will be 192.168.1.10. And it has worked. Now running it through my network, I was having some issues. So the first thing I did, because the audio wasn't working, that I switched the audio from... So I switched the audio from AC3 to MPEG2, and that could just be this older television set that I'm using, and pretty much the targeted audience for this is an older television set. So when you connect your Thor broadcast a modulator up to a, a router with a LAN connection, you'll be able to see by typing in uh, 192.168, uh, dot one dot ten you'll log in the login information will by default will be user and you'll be able to go in here and change your settings around by doing that so here's the status everything it's encoding right now I have it connected up uh, the rec level Eastern saying you can set the time and all that stuff so I have mine set to this it's picking up the uh, HDMI so you can't really change that that's just the default of what the whatever I'm using I have this set to on uh, I guess I can fix the date here eventually this has like an Eastern Standard Time modulator permits now I had it to cable but I actually want to switch it around and uh, so I'll do that in a minute so what I've done is I changed the MPEG from AC AC3 to MPEG2, so you can select either cable. Oh, sorry, no cable or air. And for cable, you can go SDR or whatever. I think for air, gives you different uh, settings, RF configuration, <laughs> and you change your TS permits. Now you can change the name of your device when it scans in to uh, whatever you want. It doesn't have to be Thor. So here's all the network information, and it leaves it on a D. HCP, so it's a, it's a, um, it's always going to be this uh, address 192.168.1.10, and if you want to back up your system, which I've done, I just done a backup click there, and you'll download the file for a backup, and you can do your upgrades and all that kind of all that good stuff. So I'm going to go and set it up to air. It's going to stop broadcasting over here. Major number. I don't know what all this is, but I will go with all this default. I want to put it kind of I don't know channel 9 or 10 or 11 you know I'll go with 12 yeah I'll go with 12 we'll, we'll do that for this video all right and I'll leave everything there and as I said on my TV it was by default it was AC3 but I, I'm gonna put it over to MPEG2 because the audio was working that way could just be the older TV or some somewhere in the settings of the TV I'm not sure so I'll go with that and success now it should yeah over on the TV it's gonna cut off which is fine so that just means I need to rescan the TV so that it will scan in all of the ATSC over the air channels so I just go into where it says air on the TV and just do a scan and it will start scanning this TV starts at a weird channel like 34 and then goes back and does it and that's how it does it scanning of all the channels so now we got everything set up I have my Outdoor TV antenna going to the TV to the ATSC connection, and and they have the uh, uh, HDMI in and the loop out, and I got all that set to it. So now I'm set to channel 12, C012, and uh, the connector to the computer has got this old router, which is connected to this box here that is a, a USB and has a uh, LAN connection adapter. Which is going into my laptop because they don't build new laptops, don't have uh, network cable connectors anymore. When you do turn your Thor modulator on, and if you don't have a video source connected to it, it will give you a white screen that says Thor just to indicate that it's not receiving the source at that time. But when you do have it going, you, all three lights will light up at the front of your modulator. So, my thoughts on the Thor HDMI. RF modulator is at the price I'm glad they've dropped a little bit in price by a few hundred dollars since from a few years ago which is great the one thing I recommend first off is get a router if you don't have a router go to a thrift store 
and pick up one of these you can find a router at a thrift store usually for a couple bucks like a lot of internet service providers have uh, the wi-fi built into it and a lot of people are doing away with routers so if that's your case uh i'd say look in the thrift store you can probably pick one an older one up cheap and it'll work for connecting it up so that you'll be able to get your um connected up to a computer so that you can change the settings because i think with uh that's one thing with it having the network connection uh, you're going to want to do that. Now, it doesn't have to be connected to the network all the time. It's just when you're configuring the settings. And there's not a huge amount of settings to configure with, which is a good thing because it doesn't have like a whole whack of rocket surgery settings that you have to go through to get this thing working. So that works out. That, that makes this thing uh, a lot easier to set up. As I showed when I first connected this thing up, I was able to get it to work right out of the box. So some people will buy this and they'll want it right out of the box to work through their cable connection. And uh, that this this will do that. It's uh, it's set up the way I bought it was set up for cable. As I demonstrated, it's easy enough just to switch it over to uh, ATSC over the air, uh, mix it with your over the air channels. And in this picture here, it has a little picture. I don't have one with me, but there's a splitter and you just connect, plug it into your splitter. Uh, when you turn a splitter the opposite way, it will become a combiner, and you can combine all your coaxial signals through which, however you want to go. If you're using it for an over the home over the air antenna, this will work great for creating another channel. If you're doing it in a um, industrial sense, if you're at, at a bed and breakfast hotel and you want to be able to uh, have a local channel for your whatever for whatever reason and you want to have it going throughout that, that system uh, and you, you can combine it that way as well so there's definitely lots of applications for this like if you have a, a video source uh, for a presentation and you want to be able to send it to multiple monitors now some people may say you want to just run an HDMI splitter you could do that but if you're running it to multiple TVs definitely the cost of splitters and uh, HDMI cable will add up where this thing would be even though initially the, the cost is ex uh, more expensive but you can also stack these so if you want to make multiple channels so you had multiple modulators and you wanted to have uh, several channels basically make your own cable system by buy each one of these would uh, be a, one of your um, personal cable channel you could set up one of these now another thing is it also digitizes well, it's already digital, but it transfers the HDMI source to a computer or to a over-the-air PVR. So the nice thing about that is, which I've done with my tutorials, is I've used my modulator to record the video source for my satellite videos so that I can be able to have the footage and then be able to uh, edit it in the uh, Kaden Live video editor to put it on YouTube. So it's been a a great tool for doing that to have something that will, I can use to capture HDMI video. I have an analog capture device, but not something to do HDMI. So with the PVR, I've been able to do that. Um, this can be used at as uh, hotels or better breakfasts just to create their own local channel with information that would just have like uh, inf um, informational video packages, uh, whatever. Uh, these are these are these would be a great tool. I'm surprised that not these are not as well known about there are they're not more mainstream my like my opinion on these things is every tv set, set you every tv set should have the option to output video via a, a high definition video, video via a coax but the cost of this and with the probably the proprietary technology of hdmi it's made that difficult over the years but now it's coming down in price which is a great thing um, expect to see these things to come lower in price and becoming more mainstream. Now, being with an ATSC one broadcaster, it does not do ATSC three, so I can see these things becoming more affordable recently within the next time, um, several years, because as with ATSC th uh, three coming in. But also, yeah, it won't do ATSC three, but ATSC three TVs probably will eventually have ATSC one. Compati backward compatibility because I don't see all channels switching from ATSC3 to um, all TV chat broadcasters to switch right away. It'll probably be a gradual thing. So, so I think ATSC1 will be around for a while. And there's a lot, most of the marketplace, the TV sets have ATSC and QAM tuners built into them. 
So this thing will be around for a long time, and they're still making TVs with only Quam and ATSC one. Um, Quam and ATSC one tuners built into them. So definitely within the last ten years, every TV has had the tuners to receive one of these things built in. Where even the newer ones will have the backward compatibility. So it's definitely this will be around for a long time. If you like this content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ottawa Octane. Also, uh, like and follow on me on my Facebook page, which is Robbie Strike Facebook.com slash Robbie Strike Videos. And also, I have a free to air satellite page, which is Free Satellite TV One on Facebook. You can find me there with the hashtag Free Satellite TV. You'll usually, my face will pop up. Hashtag Free Satellite TV. Uh, this is definitely something if you're a free satellite TV. If you're doing free satellite TV, this would be something that might be useful to you so that you can use your over the air channels and then maybe send your favorite free satellite TV channel over your over the air channel um, line and uh, have that extra channel in your personal home setup. Mm -hmm.